welcome back family to another video. My name is Emily, otherwise known as shamanism. You can call me anything, just don't call me late for dinner. Welcome to the channel. Here we talk about nature, gardening, spirituality, well-being, and health, and many other subjects. So welcome if you're brand brand new, and welcome back if you're an OG. Much love, namaste, hi. So today's video is going to be on the power and reason that you should absolutely delve into the wonderful and magical world of art. Now, as someone who's been semi-artistic all of her life, now, when I say that, I don't mean in the drawing sense, like I could not probably create this, at least not yet. I mean in the musical sense. I'm a musician. I play a smattering of a smattering of different instruments and music has kind of always been my thing. You guys may know that I play the singing bowls. I play the hand pan, which isn't currently around me right now. Uh, what else do I play? I play, I get it confused if it's called the malimba or the marimba, but in any way, it's a hand, a little African hand piano thing, a little bit. Uh, I play a lot of different things is the point. And so music has always been my form of artistry. Now, recently, I have been dabbling around in the world of more tangible art in terms of like painting and drawing and things like that. And it's been really, 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 really fun. So what I wanted to share with you in this video is why absolute, why I think that absolutely everyone should paint or make art or sculpt or do whatever type of art it is for you, woodworking, I don't know, literally whatever you can think of, heck, flower arranging can be absolutely be an art. In fact, very many things can be an art. However, the sake of this, keeping this video relatively simplistic, I'm talking about the tangible arts, like painting, like paper mache, like, heck, I don't know, scrapbooking, drawing, whatever, something, something you sort of would do by hand, I guess, and pottery, anything like that. So myself recently, I've never actually, as I said, dabbled into the handmade artistic arts, I guess you could say. That's a really weird way to say that. At any rate, I, I bought myself, I thought I would show off, I bought myself this cute little, and it is, it's like super itty bitty smidgen, because that's the size of basically my hand. What I love about these, and no, I'm not in any way associated with them or anything like that, however, I would love to be one day, call me, um, is that you can take these like anywhere, super duper anywhere. I mean, it's the size of my palm pretty much. So you can pop it in your purse, and if you feel inspired to do a watercolor or a painting or a drawing or a sketch, though this is specifically watercolor paper, you can do it from anywhere. It was also really cool, and of course I don't have these because good planning had me. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't think to bring the watercolors that actually come with this, but believe it or not, these actually also come with a little six set of watercolors. Now, I am gonna show you what those could look like. However, funny enough, the little, what I'm about to show you is called a swatch. And it just means that it's it's essentially you take your color gradient and you spread it across this swatch page um, and what you essentially do is show for yourself the range of colors that you can get from a single color i.e just by changing it with water so the very left hand side would be like the thickest most darkest color and then you sort of with water dilute it out until the point at which you have just a little bit of pigment and see so a swatch looks like these and I had never seen what one was or what one should be. As you can see, what I was trying to explain was this is the most concentrated pigment and then this would be your lesser pigments. And all of that is changed only by using water if you're using watercolors. And I imagine it's similar for, like, for acrylics and things. So I bought myself a cheap pad and some little watercolors and I started to paint a little. Now I will not be showing you my first painting again, my first soiree back into the painting because it was a le terrible. <laughs> However, I thought I would show you just a couple of the little, the little bitty art pieces that I have done since I started to follow. Actually, I'll perhaps link her as well because she's a super, I think she's a super excellent teacher if you also happen to want to learn watercolors. And her name is Jenna Rainey, and I will link her channel in my description so that you can follow her if you have the urge to follow along and do her watercolor tutorials like me. She literally has a like two hour solid beginner to end, all beginner inclusive like guide to watercolors from her, I don't know, of course, prepping, I don't have the brushes or anything with me either, but she has her, she the brushes, the brushes she recommends, the. She explains everything from A to Z, and I'm not even joking. And I 
will tell you the honest truth. When I sat down to watch her tutorial, I thought, my God, an hour and 50 minutes. I'm not sure if I'm down for that, but I kid you not, I watched the whole thing and I got a lot of information. So anyway, blah, 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 long story long, what I wanted to share was, and I, I kid you not, this was like maybe my second painting after watching one of her tutorials were these flowers because it went, sorry, wrong side. I literally have not, you see, I even dated them. I started to date them 10, 25. Yep. Six. Yeah, close enough. Because I wanted to show, not for you guys, although I am showing you guys, how I progressed. Let me just tell you, that was the second round of Sakura flowers. And the first one, mm, not good. Lavender, Black Eyed Susan, and Tulip. Again, these were like my first, th seriously, that was my first times ever attempting to paint those flowers. So the reason I, part one of why I wanted to make this video is that I strongly believe from the there aren't many things in my life that I get extreme, extreme relaxation from other than say meditation or maybe like swimming or horseback riding. And when I picked up a watercolor paintbrush and I mixed it with the color and I started to watercolor paint for free, for freely, for fun, it unlocked that feeling in me again. And so I wanted to share that you should absolutely give it a go. I mean, I'm not saying you have to stick with it, but try watercolors or, or again, whatever type of artistic medium and see how it feels because it can be a really, really good, really meditative practice. So then the second thing I drew in the book was my swatch, which funny enough is from a, a different set of watercolors. I can explain that in another video. I, I'm not necessarily proud of all these, but I am proud of the fact that I'm making progress. So that was just me trying to do a tulip again. And then I hadn't really, I was just, I'm trying to build my confidence on these. So this was, no matter what it looks like, what it is actually is from Generini has a, a practice, uh, uh, several probably practice exercises. And one of them is to sort of make circles. Uh, there's a way to do it with your brush. You make circles and to just, it's an also an activity of me, as you can kind of tell, <laughs> blending the watercolors. I don't know how well this is focusing, but it's a blending and texturing and, and whatever practice piece. You, again, I date all of these, so you can, if you wanted to, you could see the practice. This was the first time I ever really attempted to do a Black Eyed Susan. I didn't actually date that one on the front, funny enough, but that one I thought turned out quite well. I was, I get, one of the things that I think is funny, one of the things Jenna Rainey talks about as well, is that in the beginning, she used to be absolutely terrified of see how the black kind of bleeds into the petal? She said she was always afraid of bleeds. And that used to be something that would absolutely terrify me about watercolors too. And now it's something kind of fun to play with. And then, so I just thought I'd share you guys my, my most recent, I think, just <laughs> the upper corner looks like it's a mistake. It's not. I was just sort of playing around with blending colors and, and I discovered that you don't, a little bit of pigment goes a long, long way in watercolors. <laughs> That's a lesson you'll learn over and over again. Again, I was just dabbling with like, what can I do? Can I, it was my first attempt at a wild bouquet of flowers. So, and I was trying again, the reason I brought you this video was not to show off my own art. It's was more to say, hey, look, I am no artiste like who, who painted the Duomo or anything like that or, or the cathedral or in any of these crazy places. However, there is value in doing art for every human being, I believe. Whether that's just like a form of journaling, it's like visual journaling, or just a way to, like that you could, for example, keep track of things you see in meditations. I just think there's much, much value in art and it's just aesthetically pleasing and it could become a source of income if you're really, really talented at it. So I thought that I would share that. I would highly encourage you, if you're not already practicing some form of art, to practice some form of art in your day. And as I've said before, to allow yourself at least five minutes, I mean, minimally people, five minutes in every day to do something for just you that just you absolutely love to do for fun and see how your life changes. It's pretty amazing actually. And if you wanna see another video about the morning routine that I've currently adopted, check out the video in the cards I will link at the end. I just realized I don't know how to do the hey here or here thing. So I guess mental note to self, figure out how to do that. If you want to watch this video thing. Oh, and also before I go, if any of you want to reach out to me for coaching, for help with anything, by all means reach out to me here at this email address. I would love to hear from you. Seriously, you're welcome to share anything you want to share. 
And if you need coaching, you want coaching from me on anything that you know that I can do, that you've seen here on the channel or whatever else, then you're welcome to reach out to me at that email again here. So without further ado, have a beautiful rest of your week, rest of your day, much love, many blessings. And if no one has told you today, I love you. Have a beautiful day. Namaste. Much love. Bye. Bye. But that sounds like a fart. <laughs>